Um, well, we use the writing workshop model a fair bit in English, and so the kids have done, this was like their, their third writing workshop this time around. To stay within the context of what you've read. Think about how it changes your understanding of the plot, the characters, the writer, so on. Do you get what I'm saying? Fantastic. So let's go in, let's give the poem a second draft read. So, if you find a line or a stanza that you think you can make a connection with, I want you to highlight it blue on your copy that you've made of this poem. The second bit here is I want you to highlight it yellow if you can make an inference or draw a conclusion about the poet based on what he's written here. If you feel like you're ready to get started with the second draft read and highlighting either places that you can make connections or places you can draw inferences, you can go on ahead and get started. When we do group work in class, I like to give us time to prep. I don't like to just throw us straight into the pool. So what we're gonna do everyone is in our groups, we'll take about 10 minutes to get ready. What I did before class, everybody, is I went through your uh, template documents. I dropped some comments, I dropped some questions, I dropped some sort of things to think about, some kind of questions for the group. I think what's gonna work best today is probably if just one or two people are speaking on behalf of the group. So if those people wanna take the charge and speak, that's great, that's fantastic. All right, we're gonna have that document up on the board, everybody. We'll use that document as a record to go through our conversation. So as we're going through, if you're listening, update your annotations, be thoughtful, ask questions, use the chat as we're going through. When you're speaking, everyone, when you're teaching, think about speaking clearly, slowly, pausing to give people that time, and make sure to reference that document as well as our copies of the text. So who can remind me, what is an inference? Victoria, I see your comment and I'm gonna get to you in just one second. I'm not sure what's wrong. Cole, you're absolutely right, an educated guest. So an inference involves you looking at all the information given to you in a text, and then you take your background knowledge, right? and you bring that into the equation and then you draw a new conclusion from what you see before you, okay? Both your background knowledge and what the text is saying. Good, I like how that's kind of buttressing what Stephanie's saying here about this human life, this compassion, this thoughtfulness of others. Great, Molly, we're really focusing here on Jim, and I want everybody to stop and think for a second before we move on, right? Good, good, let's look at, uh, we're seeing the satire connection that Tommy's pointing it out, right? If Huck is a kid and he can figure it out, then why can't the rest of the country? That fact in our face, Tommy, that you're pointing out, really relates to the argument that Twain is getting us to think about here. Excellent thinking there, Tommy. Good, Stephanie, and you're making the connection to the Wilkes family, right? Think about why it's important that Huck does this with the Wilkes family, who are white and wealthy and landowning, and why he also does it with Jim, who is the exact opposite of that, right? Ladies, we get to go on? Everybody at home, we get to go on? It's nice to have people in the room to check in with. It makes me tough. 
speak for less than I think a little bit better sometimes. Thank you all in the chat for the thumbs up. All right, so here's what we're going to do, everybody. We're gonna